family, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, yeah, everybody knows everybody, and it does. It's just, it lightens the mood. The music is also fun, so that's... that's it's light-spirited, too. Yeah, it's a lot just of fun. Just to have some fun, listen to music, have a good meal. Yeah. Just no stress. Leave it all at the door, right? Well, that is a, that is a happy restaurant. It I is. mean, there's good energy there. Yeah. There is, there is. And good food, too. So, yeah. we, the overall, everything worked out wonderfully. It certainly did, yeah. The yes. guy even chased me out the door. He said, you're Chris Spiker. You're, you're a celebrity. Like, from, like, 10 years ago, you know, oh, we're... Okay. We were working on some stuff together, and he, his wife said, "Hey, go get him. Go say hi to him." And I just thought, "Wow, that was magical. The whole thing." That's awesome. Yeah, that that tends to happen at our shows. I have to say that the people who come and surround us are just—it's a wonderful bunch of people, and so. A lot of people come there as a stress relief. Like whenever we play, even during the week, they they come there and it just everybody just feels good. And that's that's what we hope we can bring to people. The full codes, you know. It, I just I'm only on Facebook, but I've seen a lot of talk. How long has the group been together? The is group it, itself, as it is now, yeah. is officially together for four and a half. Okay, years. so yeah, there's it, a little history. You know what it is? Okay, so it. it's not the type of band where like you got like four or five guys together, you decided to start a band, and you had a rehearsal one night, and that day would be indicative of your history. Okay, from there on out. So we started teaching the kids music at a certain age. So then, like, I started playing in my own band years ago. So Jesse was the first who kind of joined me. And he's like the second oldest. And then it was Joey. And then it was Stevie. And then it was Tom. So it kind of just like morphed into, I think we're a family band. Like it was never really like the big plan. Right. But I think since Tyler joined the band four and a half years ago, here in, La actually in Antelope Valley, is when it started where we can say our first gig, professional gig, because we play drums together. I play drums and he played drums. Tyler. So, yeah, and so he mimicked and me. And he's, how old is he now? He's 13 now. Yeah, just so now he's full-time drummer, so I think the band inception would have to be four, year, four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. In May. Where we're like May. all like one unit. And, and it, it happened here, in mm -hmm. KV. It really did. Everybody gets along? <laughs> Yeah. For the no. most part, they <laughs> have to. You know, That's you my question. Yeah, we, well, we do know. I, th I think we're pretty fortunate because we do have kids that get along really well. I mean, they're homeschooled, so they had to, they had to work together. They were together twenty four seven. You know, they they're getting a little older now, so they they drive, they go out, and they do their own thing. But but no, they they get along really well for the most part. The, I mean, the six personalities. Yes. Right. You know, so well, they're all related. They're right? all related. <laughs> well, they're all related. That's but the rumor. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Hey, you two, you've got some accents. Where did that come from? So I'm a New Yorker, which is, you know, there's no big secret there, right? So my wife, when I met her, she was in Switzerland, but she was born in England. So she had a heavy Cockney accent when I met her. And then I guess through the years of this, which is not going to go away anytime Just soon. took over. She, she took over. Kind of took over. Took, took over. No, no I, can't, over. I can't even pretend to have a, Brit a British oh, accent at all. Oh, VA, so. over. And, over. And what was the highway or the road that got you to the Antelope Valley? That's a, that was an interesting road, yeah. actually. You know, okay, so we were living in Vegas for eight years. So we had, at that time, been searching for management and direction. And uh, we learned a long time ago, do what you do, don't do what you don't do. We needed management. So long story short, we had signed on with somebody, and it was time to get to L.A. Now, in my wisdom, I'm like, you know what we'll do? Why don't we just pack up? Let's move to Beverly Hills. We'll rent a house. And then I'm like, okay. Is that 20,000? Exactly. <laughs> then I said, okay, maybe Studio City, maybe Burbank. And as you keep amortizing your list of where you want to live, you wind up in Lancaster. Yeah. Yeah. There are some very attractive units in Barstow. I don't know if you've been there. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. I spent the week there one afternoon, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But uh, it's true. So we, we wound up in Lancaster. Yeah. But it was a blessing because what that afforded us is the opportunity to meet some great people. Yes. Great you know, uh, supporters, fans, and it let us really get our chops together playing some venues that were open to hearing loud rock and roll. Mm -hmm. You don't get that in places in Beverly Hills. You don't get it. Everything's like, hey, we're trying to talk, could you keep it down? Because you know? we've played and Beverly Hills as well, and yeah. it's a just it's a yeah, completely yeah. different vibe than up here. So and you have to watch your yeah. tongue and what you say, and we're, we're kind of rock and roll people, man, and that's just, <laughs> it's what it is, you know? Yeah. And there's a, there's, there's a freshness in that, if mm -hmm. you will. So I think that we found a good little home. Yeah, we did. In Antelope Valley. Uh, you guys are writing songs? A lot of songs. A lot of songs. A lot of songs. How does that happen? So What's the process? The, we have a home recording studio, so everything's always set up. And it usually starts with one person either 
playing something, writing lyrics, and then we all kind of get together. Um, or they'll ask input and they'll say, you know, I'm, I've played this, I just wrote that, what do you think? And we, we share it. Everybody has a little piece of themselves in, in most of the music. You know, some, some of them are written by two of us and then some of them is written by, some of the songs are written by six of us. It just depends how the song develops. You know, everybody could bring, whether it's lyrically, whether it's musically, everybody has a little You, you know what happens is like, okay, we have a song called Star Spangled Through and Through, which is kind of in the patriotic mode, if you will. And I had written the song. And I it just at, like maybe five or ten minutes, so I came downstairs because it sounded like country to me, and I was excited because I'm not traditionally a country songwriter, but I have you know written some country in that genre. I came to my daughter Joey. She's sitting at the kitchen table. I said, "You gotta hear this. Check it out." And I'm singing it for her. So put your hands in the air. We ain't going nowhere, you know. And she's like, "Oh, oh, we could change that. Yeah. Oh, and you know what we could do? We could change that line." And I'm like, well, let's listen to the whole song first <laughs> before we start changing anything. We might not have to be changing, you know. And then she came up with a couple of really key lines, and then Jesse interjected. My son Jesse's our bass player. And then Tyler and Stevie said, you know what, on that one line at the end, which you may want, and I'm like, you know, it's really clever, actually. And then everybody had an input. And then yeah. my wife came up and said, you know the part where you say, you know, and th that song was done. So that was the spirit of the whole family kind of making that, that, that happen. Yeah, that, and what's really, really kind of cool when we write all together is everybody has a different musical, I mean, influence. The kids grew up knowing the whole history because that was part of, if you're going to play, then you need to know your history. But when you listen to the music that comes out of their rooms, like Jesse will have some Blink 182, Tyler will be playing some Sinatra, um, Joey's playing some country, like Stevie's five playing... Studios there. It's, it's yeah, absolutely it's crazy, but, but what it brings to a song is freshness, you know, like everybody has a little bit of a different take on it and together it seems to work so to get writing credit to get writing credit on a song you you have to come up with what one line or one phrase or yeah, you were I mean, there when they wrote it or yeah well to be fair to the spirit of the writing process you don't want to alienate anybody right and if somebody did come up with somebody and it's reasonable you, you give them the credit for it now if you're going to break it down with the publishing that's we just share and everything as a family, so it's easy for us. I'm not, you know, like we'd never say, well, I only wrote one line, you know, you wrote one line, so you're only going to get 5%, you know, yeah. and that's, we would never do that. So we just, we all are BMI associated writers. So it just, we put it under the full go name, and whoever writes what, writes what. And it's, it seems to balance itself well. Wow. So, yeah, that works. How long have you been making a living in music? He was 10 when he started, yeah. <laughs> literally. No, he's been doing it his entire well, life. Well, life. His entire life. So, um, you know, I met him, I was 16, and I was starting my own band, which I never obviously did. I didn't join his right away, but we had to work to have the, the kids, and then it just became something that we were able to do now full time. But our entire life, that's all he's done. But you know what was so interesting? Okay, so I met my wife in Switzerland, right? And we were still single, we were courting each other, and I said to her, I'll never forget it in jest, I said, because she was a piano player, I said, man, could you imagine? I said, we'll get married and have kids be like the Partridge family. <laughs> so she's like, who? I said, you know, like the Partridge family. <laughs> Google, she's sure. like, who? I'm like, the Partridge family, hello, stupid. She's like, they never apparently never made it here. Yeah. And then I realized, I said, oh, okay, the Von Trapp family? <laughs> oh, a family <laughs> of music? I said, yes, and then when, obviously, we, we got married, I. You know, I showed her all those 70s shows, which I was a big fan of. Yeah. You know, the Jackson 5 and yeah. you know, uh, Partridge Family, Cow Cells, which were really the, you know, the, the makeup of the Partridge Family. And it did turn into that. So it wasn't really a plan, but it was suggested. It was so maybe idea. it was some, like, <laughs> manifestation of, you know, some music thing. That is know. what I think, you know, when yeah. I see you guys. So what is, what's the big difference between a family band and a band made up of just uh, individuals? Big, big difference. The fact that I'm out this, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go with this real no, quick. But nobody's late for practice because they all live in the same house. So that's one plus, yeah. you know, and then... So, it, okay, okay, so I've been in like a million bands and I was always the guy who started the band, bought the equipment, got the rehearsal room, printed up the posters, got the gigs, did all the work. Yeah. I really wanted it so bad. Yeah. I just had to do it. The problem with other members Who's playing in five other bands that can't do the gig? Who's late for practice? Who doesn't want to be there? Who got high? Whose girlfriend broke up? You know, all, all the things that, like, you should leave outside of the music thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who's fighting with who over, that was my song, I don't want to play, I hate, I hate that song. I'm like, really, guys? You know, and girls, you know, it, it doesn't happen. So it's the, a miracle that it five is. individuals can all get together. And play well. And so play well. that's, and who get it, because there's a, there's a tendency to all want to have your own little ego seep in. Yeah. That's what we do. There's so, a DNA but that it's happens a good, But it's, a, it's positive and healthy. It's a good thing, yeah. Do 
you guys must have your own CDs. We're actually, we're, we've been blessed for the past uh, few months to work with Ron Dante um, as a producer on our album, along with our manager, John Farida, who's um, CEO of The Alternative, and his partner, Jamie. Um, we, we have an amazing, amazing team behind us, so um, we're in the finishing process. We've done all the recording right now, and we're just finishing it up. This is our first uh, real CD. We have three prior, but like gotcha. we call them yeah. demo CDs. Yeah. Yeah. But this, this is, is our first, which we'll call a release. Contact information for the Fulcos. You can find everything on our website. It's uh, thefulcos.com, and everything will be listed there. Our shows, our contact information, our management um, information well, right yeah, there. Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. everything's right there. Like your Facebook page, and uh, thank you for the shout-out to my marquee. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, that thank was you. awesome. Thank you for the shout-out to us. We felt like so four much five love. Times. <laughs> we, kept we did. We kept on like you and coming back and looking at it. So, Fulcos, thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, so you Chris. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah.